Hi there, you are watching Over the Back Fence, a conversation among neighbors. This is a production of Neighborhood Falmouth. I'm Susan Laux, the Director of Neighborhood Falmouth, and our conversationalists today include Jackie Pratt, Mary and Bihari, Mary Pat McKenzie, and me. So our topic right now is books you have read recently or books you have enjoyed. Um, books, what do you like? What's, what's been coming to mind? Uh, where's your favorite place to get books? How do you find out what you want to read next? Um, whatever, with summer coming, this is a great time to stretch out with a good book. So what do you like? What kind of reading do you enjoy doing? What genre? Mm. So who's going to go first? Uh, well, I, I, I'm hooked on this right now. So, and I am absolutely, I, I was fortunate that I worked at the market bookshop for many years. And um, so we were able to get advanced copies, but also we have a lot of signed copies. So I thought pretty much when I was working there, I loved mystery books. And so the summer was like, oh, you got to find good mystery books. And, and now my tastes have changed. It's really interesting. And I, I mean, I love to read garden books at certain times of the year or stories about gardening or that kind of thing. But I also really like nonfiction more than fiction, which is odd because I'm in a book club. And so mostly we do fiction. We don't do nonfiction. Right. Um, or we do historical fiction, which is can go either way. But I am reading the Sackler book right now, um, I, which is just absolutely, I, I can't put it down. The writer is so good. And it, it's a story of pain. I'm sorry, I should know that because I'm reading it and it's in the other room. Um, so something like the story of pain. Yes. yes. Right. Yeah. And so it's fascinating to me. And, and I read a lot of books about politics or about nature. So I do read a lot of nonfiction, but this reads, this reads like a th thriller. It really does hmm. because Oxycontin was, you know, like their ba baby and they, nobody ever identified them with it. And the Sackler family is like worldwide one of the most well-known philanthropic families. Mm. So this to me was a real shocker. Even I mean it's reading like um like one of Mario Puzo's books about the you know like the mafia. It it's just wow breathtaking. But I but I mean, and I and I do love fiction, and I love more gentle things. Um, I consider gardening books really gentle, and uh, so I have. I, I mean, behind me there are a lot of them, and but again, that's nonfiction. So I think it's. I think different people have different. Like some people never read nonfiction. Hmm. Some people read it all the time. The other book I recently finished, which I was fascinated with, was by James Carroll. And it was about how the Catholic Church has, I don't seem to be on a cheery little group of books, right? <laughs> so this was on the breakdown of the Catholic Church and, and going all the way back to like the, the year, you know, a thousand. And yeah, I guess I haven't been on a real cheery tour of books. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Those sound like interesting topics to worth learning more about very interesting topics so last weekend this weekend last weekend it was james it was carol's book and then this weekend it's been the sacklers and it was like <laughs> i didn't even want to move off the couch <laughs> well you know it's it's interesting that when you mentioned the sackler book you mentioned how they're great philanthropy because that right. makes them both devils and angels at the same time you know and yes. that is that's the human condition, right? We're not right. all one or all the other. And this is extreme one and extreme the other at the same time. And actually, that's interesting you say that, Susan, because both of those books are like that. Because Jim Carroll was a priest who yes. left the priesthood 
got married and had a family, but now he has left the Catholic Church as well. And when I knew him back at the Marco Bookshop, you know, we used to talk about these things at lunch and stuff. Never, I mean, not to this degree that he's now talking about. So it is devils and angels. It is like there's the good and then there's the flip side, which is, you know, I, maybe that's true in all parts of our lives, but I, it, there are writers that can really bring that across to you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, who else? Marion, Jackie? Well, you know, I'm just looking, um, James Carroll, you know, I do books, uh, presentations through the Encore and Newcomer group and James Carroll came here and, uh, read for us. I was trying to find, because he's written a number of books. I have his books here. But anyway, he was wonderful speaker. Just you could hear mm. a pin drop. Uh, and I'm looking here. I've been in a book club. I've been in two book clubs. But I've been in a book club for eight, almost 19 years. And we just did, I just did the list of the last number of years. Um, but right now we're reading This Tender Land by William Kruger, um, which is quite interesting. Um, it's about four children who run away from a very, very um, awful uh, private school. And so I'm not quite finished with that. But I was looking through my list. And um, <clears throat> one of my favorite books is Citizens of London. Uh. And that is, you know, not fiction, and I love that. And then one of the other books that I read a hundred years ago, but I really liked, was Eleanor and Franklin. Oh yes, um, it was just such an incredible book, and I still, when I think of books that I really enjoyed reading, that was one of them. Doris Kearns Goodwin. Yes, um, just a wonderful, wonderful book, and I so admire Eleanor Roosevelt and everything she did. And even after he died, she became more of her own person. I, you know, I've watched a number of documentaries about her and I'm just still so impressed. I so wish she was alive today. She would be such an incredible person to have, you know, in our government. So, but anyway, I'm looking through my list. Maybe I'll I'll get back to you. I'm trying to find the book that when James Carroll was here. Um, lovely guy. Really lovely. Nice. So I'll get back to you. Nice. <laughs> How about you, Jackie? <clears throat> I, I'm what, um, I, I basically have been getting books from the library for the last oh, eight years. Um, and they, they have a homebound um, section which means that they, they bring me books. And I had no trouble at all. I, I, when I connected with them, the librarian said, can you just give me a couple of books that you think you might like to read? And I had no trouble at all. I'm, I really like mysteries, but I'll, there are other things I, I want to read. Um, I, I, don't, I love Doris Kearns Goodwin. I love anything she writes. I love um, the, the, their their number of nonfiction books that I that that I've enjoyed, but and I try to do I try to balance it a little bit. The librarian refers to me as her voracious reader, nice. because, because I don't just I, I I mean she delivers every two weeks and she'll bring twenty books and I'll read twenty books. Oh and wow! If they're here, I'll wow. read. Them. The the thing is that. I did that last night and you can tell. <laughs> I started a book and I wanted to finish it. I kept, it was one of those books where I sort of liked it, but I wasn't crazy about it. But I thought if I keep going, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy it. And so I finished it. And it's, it's something that's really popular right now called Black Buck by Matteo. And I can't, I'm not going to begin to try to find out. Black Buck, and it's it's basically about a, a young black who 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 learns to become a salesman, and and it's also like the thing is that it also reads like a textbook in learning how to sell, um, and 
it's just it's kind of interesting, but it maybe wouldn't it maybe it's outside my cup, you know, my cup of tea. Um, it, the the uh, his thinking is interesting and how he handles things and whatever watching you know watching him develop as a human being was fun but um i've got to admit the the, the there's a there's a mystery that i that i've read called push and i don't remember the author but it's probably one of the best mysteries i've read in a while it's basically <laughs> a a misunderstood kind of slightly neurotic woman um who i could identify with and <laughs> And it turns out in the end she was right. <laughs> so, but it was it was it was it was it was it was a new one. It's I, I was surprised because I was looking for other new mysteries, and so I got on to Goodreads, and it's highly um, it's you know it's reviewed very very highly. Um, it's it's tough. It, the thing is, it's tough because I have my favorite authors. Um, you know, I, I like. Um, I, I like John Sanford a lot. Um, I like James Lee White. I like, um, I, 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 I enjoy um, both of the Kellermans. And uh, I, I, you know, so there are, you know, I kind of have my faves there, but I, 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 I was so disappointed because I, I really like Patricia Cor Cornell and I hadn't been reading her lately. And I read her lately, her latest book. And it was, it was, it was a sort of about an astronaut and she's oh, changed yeah. her writing has changed oh yeah and mm -hmm. i thought this is no fun <laughs> where's the where is cake scarpetta you know the coroner extraordinaire i mean i, I want her to solve medical mysteries and now it's it's gone <laughs> but at any rate i i do you know i I, I I like to read. I really love to read. And and I what's what and I was talking to somebody last night and it's it's funny because um I, I managed a sober house for a while here in town. And um one of one one day one of the the, the, the trustees for the, the the owners of the house um were were talking to me and, and my one of the one of the residents came through and he said, well, you don't, you really want to treat her nice because she knows 19 ways to kill you and get away with it. <laughs> was that, that was a title of a book, wasn't it? Was that the title of a book? I don't know, but the thing not is, to kill you, but to kill someone. Yeah, oh yeah maybe, but you know, it was so funny. You know, and it, and it, I said, well, you know, take a look outside. The plants really are growing pretty well. And, uh, but, um, hey, Jackie, yeah. a lot of people <laughs> made a lot of money writing mysteries about killing people. Yeah, right. true. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Um, I, you know, thank you. So I've, I've loved hearing what you guys, and I always, whenever I have conversations like this, I always write down, you know, the books, Buck yes. and James Carroll, and, you know, everything. And, you know, who knows whether I'll find these again, but um, I want to, so I read mostly fiction and I really, you know, I go through some periods where I read, you know, like a Mark Kurlansky, like a Cod or a Salt or something like that. And I love that kind of stuff. And I just find that, you know, I'm busy enough still working full time that when I get in bed at night to read, it can't be too demanding and i i'm embarrassed that i can't do much heavy lifting right now but that's just i'm also kind of come to terms with it a little bit so my but i also get frustrated when i get a book i, I get almost all my books from the library and um and i get frustrated when i don't like them reasonably right. quickly and um so one thing I heard about, I was listening to an interview on the radio and it was called a book that's pretty hot right now called The Five Wounds. And um, that is a fiction mm -hmm. and about a, um, a Mexican descended family in Arizona, I think Arizona or New Mexico, Southwest. And, um, 
and I read about half of it and I enjoyed it a lot. I was kind of slowing down with it. Um, and then it was due and it, it had a lot long list of people waiting for it. And I really felt like I couldn't just keep holding it up. So I hope to get it back and I will pick it up at, you know, whatever page 167 or wherever I was. And, uh, but my new theory, which so far is good, is going into the library and on the end caps, they often have, um, you know, famous, you know, favorites from the last decade or, you know, heard on NPR or something. And so they come with some level of recommendation to them. Yeah. And that gives me sort of a good starting point. And then, then I'll flash through and decide whether it can't be too, um, you know, dim or dreary or too, too much, you know, sadness. And, you know, cause I just, it's like, I, you know, this is my, and part of my entertainment time. And so I'm, you know, when I used to be a much grittier reader when I was younger and that felt like, oh, you're smart if you really like dark, dark movies and dark, dark books. And now I'm, you know, now nah, I'm just like, so you know what? You know, you should try Louise Penny. They are fun. I, I do. I have read Louise Penny and I like her. Uh, yeah. They are fun. And she has two coming out. This oh, wow. year. One of them she's writing with Hillary Clinton. Oh, really? No kidding. Bizarre. And so the hero is going to be a secretary of state. Which wow. reminds me one book that I read uh, not too long ago that I thought was fabulous was called uh rodham and it oh yes and, ah. it, um, and i definitely recommend it it's fictional and it's about it imagines what hillary's life would have been like if she hadn't married bill exactly and uh sort of what her political trajectory would have been yeah. and what her personal trajectory would have been and his as well so that was great marrying i have one Carol. book which um took me a while to remember and she was also a guest speaker of mine and her name is Vicki Constantine Crook and she wrote a book called mm -hmm. The Elephant Company and it what you know when I discussed it and then she came to uh, speak to us people kind of said eh, well we want to know about The Elephant Company well it's an incredible book and I have it here. And if you would like to read it, you're welcome to read it. But it is a completely different kind of book than I've read. And it was absolutely wonderful. And I would like to get her to come back again. She was a wonderful, she was just a wonderful person. She exuded, you know, she was so knowledgeable and people loved her. So if you want to read the book, I have it. But nonfiction or fiction? Nonfiction. Mm -hmm. Nonfiction. Nonfiction. Yeah. Everything you wanted to know about elephants that you didn't know. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I, speaking I, of which. Yeah. The Book of Eels, which I loved. Right. You mentioned that once before. Yeah, it's great, and it is nonfiction, but it follows the life track of eels. And I know this sounds really geeky. <laughs> what is wrong with her kind of thing. But the Book of Eels is fascinating. It really is. It's the same thing as little. the elephant book. It's little, yeah. Nice. Not a big one, Susan. Well, stuff, I love learning stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, learning it in a way that's presented in a palatable kind of right. engaging yes. way. Right. They, it's where you walk away and you've got something, but you don't feel like you're being like, yeah, no, it's it's indoctrinated into something. It's personal. It it right. it's very personal. Nice. Nice. Well, you know what? I think we should, you know, books is such a great topic because we could go yeah. on forever. And yes. you know, it's nice to be around other book lovers, um, because you really can go on forever. And but in deference to those of us watching this program, we will not go on forever, but we will recommend that you get to your library or get to eight cousins or get to wherever you need to, to get your next fix of a read and let us know what you're reading. We'd love to, we'd love to read it too, or share information about it. So thanks for joining us. We hope you'll come back another time and take care.
Bye-bye.